Yeah. Continue that story that you were actually telling me. So uh, for us folks in the East Coast of the USA, like Dom and I, uh, some games in the World Cup this year, guys, are taking place at 5 o'clock in the morning. I went to bed last night, and Dom can vouch for me because yesterday in our stream, I, I told him that yeah, I wasn't really anticipating anything other than a big win for Argentina. And I went to bed, and I'm like, yeah, I'm going to wake up, and it's going to be like 5-0. The Argentina or something with like a Lautaro Martinez hat trick. I woke up. It was just before the um, the Denmark Tunisia game, and I looked at my phone on live score, and it said Argentina one, Saudi Arabia two, and I was like, "What?" And I have the phone in my hand, and I before I could <laughs> even like register, I already had one foot out of my bed, and I was like. <laughs> and I I went to my TV, I put like the recording on that I had, and I. I breeze watched it. Like I put it on like 1.5 speed and yeah. I was like, holy mother of God. What? The yeah, man, bro. I actually remember you told me you weren't going to wake up to watch the game. And I said, I'm yeah. going to wake up, but I'm a kind of guy, right? If I'm really tired, I would sleep through alarms, but something just woke me up at 5 6 AM this morning. Huh. And I got up and I was like, oh, okay, wow, I got up. I picked up my phone, tuned into the game right away. And, you know, Argentina were, they were just on top. They were dominating the game. And then Messi had a, a free kick, you see, 10th minute. I think I woke up the same time like Messi had just won the free kick and they were like setting it up. You know, they were like setting it up and then he put the ball into the box and then players got grabbed. I think there was actually two separate instant different scenarios at the same time where there was fouls and the referee ran over to the, the screen. I was like, why is he running over to the screen? They showed it back. It was a very soft penalty in my opinion. Yeah. I thought it was too. I, it I was mean, very I, soft. I thought it was really too. I mean, I have generally like, I'm very, uh, conservative when it comes to like pk awarding mm. like there was like minimal contact in that play man yeah it was like, soft it was i think they, they could have um let it go i really think they could have let it go but look messi stepped up he, he he scored a really good penalty and i was like okay here we go floodgates open and the floodgates did actually open because after argentina scored that goal they just kept scoring but the flag just kept going up every time Yep. So you also have to give Saudi Arabia a lot of credit for keeping that high that 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 disciplined backline and setting up that offside trap. Yep. And right away, you know what comes to mind? Herve Renard. Masterclass. I'm telling you, this has to be one of his biggest performances <laughs> ever, even surpassing the Afghan wins, if you really think about it, because this is the oh, World yeah. Cup. Oh, yeah, for sure. The, the opponent, the stage, one of the favorites, the team you and I both picked to win this competition. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, Saudi Arabia, they, they executed the offside trap well. And and, and Argentina, they, they kept breaking through and finding the back of the net, but they kept getting ruled off. And you saw, like, yeah, the Argent their play Saudi Arabia was playing that high line, yeah. and they just they just kept denying them. And, and you know that Harv Renard, that was his magic touch. Because, like... Argentina just could not get through. They could not break that, that that trap. And I think that, I mean, going forward, I'll be interested to see how Herb Bernard approaches the Poland and Mexico games. Uh, I wonder if he'll switch things up. Or, but. Listen, man. Listen, we can't. Saudi, so, right as it stands right now, Saudi Arabia going through. <laughs> Wait, did you pick Saudi Arabia to go through? Did you? No, oh, I didn't. Oh, you didn't. It was Iran and um, Morocco you picked to go through, right? As my like Middle East uh, surprise packages, yeah. Yeah, I think, I think, yeah. But look, the response. The first half, they were outplayed, in my opinion. Seven offsides by Argentina. And they would rue those offsides big time because they could have been 3 0 up, put the game to bed, make a few substitutions get their squad, you know, well oiled up and gelled up and ready to go for the next game against Mexico, right? But 1-0 at halftime, the Saudis came out like a train on fire. I'm yeah. telling you. 
And they had a plan. They said, okay, we survived that barrage in the first half. We're going to come out and try to get the goal back. And they did because it was Messi as well who lost the ball in the midfield. He did, yes. And the 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 ball that was put down by the midfield, the, the Saudi player, I think it's Al Bulai, he actually put down that ball into the um the the final third there for Saleh Al Sheri, yep. who I actually spoke about highly in my preview because he's had a really good goal to game ratio since he, he was given his chance. He's about 29 years old. And I'm telling you, bro, that was a good take. And that was actually, you know, poor defending by Romero and determination by Saleh Al Sheri and the shot beat beat um Emmy Martinez. That was that was pretty good, man. That was some good stuff. The equalizer. Yeah, and then the tide shifted after that for the next like five, ten minutes. Saudi Arabia unexpectedly really going at Argentina, like we got you right now where we where we want you. You know, and and, and the and the second goal came right away. Bro, that second goal. <laughs> Look, I've always knew, right? I remember when I first started my channel, these Saudi, you know, viewers said, Hey, go react to this guy called Salem Al Dosari. Go check him out. That's since 2018. And you know Salem al Dasari very, very well as an Egyptian um, mm -hmm. fan. And that goal was individual brilliance against an Argentina defense. And he's, the, the yeah, shot. He's, yeah, he skirted around three different Argentine defenders. It was just inside the box, too. And, and Emmy Martinez got uh, a hand to it, I believe, but he wasn't able to keep it out. Bro, like, I believe the first shot was was a deflection, and then Aldasari picked that up, and it looks like he's going to play it off, but then he just decides to go for it. Yeah. He skips around the defenders. That's a well timed shot, and it was it was one of the best goals so far. This of the I, World I was Cup. about to say that that's one of the best goals at the World Cup so far. And the celebration, man, <laughs> celebration. I I I've always admired Salim Aldasari. I always talk about him. But um, big goal, big goal for, for, for him. And he scores yet another winning goal for Saudi Arabia. Because remember, they are now 2-0 and o in their last two World Cup matches. That's true. Yeah, they beat Egypt. brilliant. Yeah. Exactly. So, look, this is a team that I didn't even predict to qualify for the World Cup. Let me say that first and foremost. I didn't. And I have to give, I have to give them a lot of credit for making it to the World Cup. And... Then defeating Argentina for what is probably the biggest upset at the World Cup ever. This is a team, Football Pharaoh, that got destroyed back in 2002, 8 0. Mm -hmm. Let that sink in. Yeah, I mean, ranked 51st in the world, Argentina number three. Exactly. This is certainly up there. And um, this is a victory, I think, for Arab football in general. The entire Arab world on social media was reacting to this sure. and, and cheering. And if there's going to be like a, a a Middle Eastern representative, like a hero in this World Cup to step to the plate, it looks like it's going to be Saudi Arabia. And this, I thought, really showed the difference between Saudi and Qatar, not just in terms of quality, but like Saudi Arabia World Cup pedigree matters because they've been here. They've done that. Yeah. It don't just apply to the powerhouse teams. It applies to countries who come to this competition regularly or semi-regularly. And, you know, on top of having just a, a coach that tactically is, is one of the, the finer managers uh, entering this tournament, I mean, I think her Argentina, they had a crash back down to reality. In, 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 in this game and it, it, could pr it could prove to be a blessing or it could just be the beginning of them flopping and just to elaborate a blessing meaning that they could come in second in the group end up on the other side avoid brazil and could meet brazil in the final man you should see you i know you probably saw the look on Lionel scaloni's face when that second goal went in he he probably swallowed he he knew he was in trouble and yeah. Saudi Arabia put on a clinic. These guys were winning all the tackles and the aerial duels and the Alois, the Alo, um, Ola, Al Owais, the goalkeeper. He plucked those balls out the air when, you know, late in the game when those chances came in for Argentina, man. Argentina have themselves to blame. They were poor defensively on those two to three attacks that Saudi Arabia had. They, all they needed was two to three attacks 
and they got in behind and won the game. Look, um, we have to talk about Sal um, Salman Al Faraj. He went off injured, and of course, Yasser Al Sharan. It's been reported that he, he his jaw is broken and he is concussed because otherwise, man, his knee just took him out. I knew he was. I knew he was out. You know, that's going to be a big miss. That's going to be a really big miss. But um, what Saudi Arabia showed us today is they have they have some um, some depth and they could actually be an element of surprise at the 2022 World Cup. Indeed, man. Yeah, yeah. You we, know, we, we, we have our first upset. Yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a big upset right there. Uh, that, that has a huge uh implication for the rest of the tournament and how the the whole like the groups the knockout stages will, can shape up i'm gonna okay i want people in the comment section when this video is uploaded to to chime in as well i'm gonna ask you and then i'm gonna answer my my two questions mm -hmm. you asked me four years ago i remember the day i was i was getting in the car at a doctor's appointment you texted me after uh germany had lost that opener to mexico and you, you asked me do you think they're gonna flop mm -hmm. so i want to ask you two questions right now number one mm. does saudi arabia advance out of this group and number two does argentina crash out right now okay first and foremost the two teams i had coming out was argentina and mexico same i think argentina and saudi arabia get out of the group mm, okay because because Mexico and Poland had a great opportunity for one of them to go up three points and they both picked up one. They did, yeah. That's how I see it happening right now because judging from the way Saudi Arabia playing, they're not losing both games against Poland and Mexico. They would, they would, get, a, they would get a point from at least two of those games. You know, like they might end up on four points. Mm-hmm. You see what I mean? And four, and if Argentina are to get out of the group, that means they would have to beat both Poland and Mexico. So we could see a situation where Saudi Arabia end up on four points, Mexico on four points, and goal difference come into play. That could be a situation. Argentina are going to need to. We could see Argentina end up on four points too. Sure. You could see a few, what, three? You could see three, three teams end yeah. up on four points. You know, it's going to be very close in the group. Okay, that's fair enough. So you think they both go through? And, I, and I, I like that your answer was based on the fact that, as we'll get to in a moment, guys, Mexico, Poland, two teams that just mm. could not capitalize on the opportunity. And a nil-nil draw, not just a draw, but a nil-nil draw handed Argentina. Well, let's, let's actually just segue over to that game because we do have four matches to talk about. So let's talk about the other game in the group, Mexico, Poland, nil-nil. I, I just want to give my prediction for the for the thing. because okay, I had, Yeah, yeah, definitely. Because I said I would answer my uncle. Uh, I'm a skeptic until I see things. Mm. I actually still think Argentina will advance. I don't think Saudi Arabia will advance. I think they'll just miss out. Because what I think is going to happen is mm. Argentina will get at least four points from the remaining two games. Saudi might pick, I think, will pick up a point as well. But I, this is my prediction. I actually think Mexico is going to get a draw against Argentina. Mm -hmm. I think Mexico will rally late to beat Saudi Arabia mm -hmm. and I think Argentina will beat Poland and maybe Mexico tops the group maybe that's my CONCACAF bias and Argentina go in second but I I'm still gonna stick my guns and say Saudi don't mm -hmm. make it out Argentina do I'm not writing off Saudi Arabia anymore I'm not writing them off no I'm not saying you're writing them off I'm just saying me I'm done with the writing off of, of Saudi Arabia they they done light up the World Cup they done made the World Cup nice right now you see what I'm saying no, yeah. the World Cup has just become a lot more interesting. You see what I mean? Because of Saudi Arabia. But look, Mexico nil, Poland nil. Big talking point in this game. The penalty. Another soft one. Yeah, I agree. Ice cream. Spongy penalty. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Soft, bro. And look, I know the referees are trying to give these little shirt tugs and whatever. But it shouldn't be happening, man. No, it, it shouldn't because it, it incentivizes players to go to ground way too easily too and to like embellish that shit. And that, that kind of exactly. stuff is much worse in slow motion on VAR than it does in real life. Um, a good ball don't lie moment. 
I, I was pretty relieved when Memo would show us save. Yep. Memo Choa, God damn, that was a good save. I love that moment, man, because it was like poetic justice. Poland didn't deserve the penalty. They didn't deserve the lead. And Memo Choa say, okay, hey, this is why I'm here. You guys messed up ahead of me, the defenders and w w Hector Moreno. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna save, I'm gonna save my nation right now. And he did, man. But Mexico is a cause for concern in the final third. Yeah, absolutely. And, and both teams were actually lacking the quality in the final third. Whereas Lewandowski missing the penalty, first time he's missed one for um Poland, and then he he didn't receive the service in open play either. So it was it was not a boring game. It was pretty, you know, open, cat and mouse type game, in my opinion. That's how I describe it best. Cat and mouse, Tom and Jerry. And they walk away with one point, just like Tom and Jerry, you know, it keeps going on. There's no winners. You see? Right. right. Did you also believe that, like, the way that, that Poland's coach set them up, like, at times they seemed a little bit too uh, negative? Yes, the very they negative. They, they would not pass the ball out from the back. They would just hit it up the field to get it away, you know? So, look, at the end of the day, it's a good result for Poland because guess what? Mexico, along with Brazil, are the only teams who had advanced out their group in the last seven World Cups. So you get a point against a team like that, it's a good point. You see what I'm saying? So, But they, they, they would feel like they should have won it with the opportunity that came up. Yeah, I, I agree. I think it, uh, Tata Martino still has not sorted out the striker issue up front. That's a big yeah. problem, bro. That, um, that flicked on header. That Mexico, I, yeah, that was, Hen that was, Henry uh, Martin, right? Oh Martin. no, uh, Alexis Vega, I think, or one of them. I can't remember. Yeah, that was it. Was very nice. I think it was Henry Martin. Yeah, that was nice. So it was one of the best chances of the, of, of the game, and um, yeah, I don't know. It just to go back for Poland for a second. It just feels like Manishkiewicz did not do his homework. It's like if, you, if anyone that's been watching Mexico for twenty twenty two, like this is a team. What's, that, what's the Polish manager name? His last name is uh, Manishkiewicz, I think. <laughs> I th yeah, Mik Mikšnovic. Yeah, I've been practicing the the, the pronunciation for that Mikšnovic. Oh yeah, yeah I, mean, I hope I'm, I hope Chech Cheshislav Mikšnovic or something like that. His name is. Yeah, both these teams. You have to wonder if Mexico is going to regret it more because they they really could have gotten like a one three points. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, we'll see. You know what, though, before we move mm -hmm. on to the other games. Um, <laughs> So Poland Saudi play f first on on Saturday at like five in the morning, I think. Mm. If um, if that goes, if that could be set up in such a way where the Mexico Argentina game becomes a not, uh, an elimination game, and I know a lot of Mexican fans out there who have beef with Argentina in history would love nothing more than to knock them out. So that's eight o'clock for the Saudi um, Poland game and two p.m. for the Argentina game. So yeah, eight yeah. Two. So Saudi Arabia could book a place by beating Poland. Like, and yeah. Poland could Poland could have their stronghold over the group if they beat Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. Because if Mexico beat Argentina, they're going to need to beat them by a bigger margin. So Poland could be on top. Argentina could be out completely Yes, on Saturday. They, it's a must-win game for Argentina. That's insane. Must win. That is that is that is not the situation you want to find yourself in. But they are, they will be a dangerous team to play in that kind of position, in For my sure. opinion. So look, we move, we move. Group C, pretty exciting stuff happening today, and we talk Group D, man. Look, first nil nil, Denmark Tunisia. I'm impressed with Tunisia, I have to say. Mm -hmm. You? Oh, for sure. Yeah. And, and I'm, it's disapp not I'm disappointed. Yeah, it, it is not surprising, but I'm disappointed with Denmark, though. They can't they can't play like this in the next game against France. No, 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 they can't. And they can't rest on their laurels and think that, you know, we beat France twice already and therefore yep. it, it's it's totally different animal, the World Cup. And 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 France got off to a flying start against Australia, and they're going to be en entering that game against Denmark thinking, hey, you know what? This is who we are. We're like, we, we should be beating you. We, we want nine and points. The thing, too, 
the fact that Denmark just beat them twice. France would want to beat them more ever, you know, a lot more than than if it was a normal situation like uh, another Nations League match or friendly. You know, France are out for for revenge here against Denmark, a team they failed to beat in 2018 as well at the World Cup. So, you okay. know, the last three matches a draw and two losses for France. They they they're out for blood when it comes to the Danes. They're out for could, blood. Yeah. Yep. We could see one of the teams that a lot of us predicted to do well in Denmark to get dumped out early. Uh, it remains a possibility, and and dropping points here against against Tunisia that really hurts Denmark because they could be heading into that final match against Australia, staring down the barrel. I mean, one point from two games is a really dangerous spot. And uh, Denmark are a lucky team. Remember at the Euros, they didn't do well in the group. They came out as a third place team, got all the way to the the semifinals. Denmark could lose that game against France on Saturday. They could lose. Hear me out. Mm-hmm. Tunisia, they play Australia. What if mm-hmm. they, they those two play to a draw? Which is what right? I think is going to happen, yeah. Or let's say Australia win that game. And then Denmark, on one point, play Australia in the final match day and take them to the cleaners and go through on four points along with France. You see? So, yeah. <laughs> So it's it's because Tunisia and Australia are teams that, you know, they, they, they might draw games. They might draw the game against each other. You see what I mean? And sure. that won't be the, the ideal result for any any one of those teams, you know. So, Which makes uh, that match between Australia and Tunisia very juicy because both these teams can – Australia is going to be fighting for survival and Tunisia is going to be looking like, hey – we got a point off a, a exactly. tournament dark horse here. Let's go into that France game with four damn points. Yeah, can, yeah. You know, um, you saw Aisa Lauduni today. For yeah, he was good. He was good. He was he was amazing, man. Yeah. His, and he, he was one player that I mentioned, uh, player to watch as well. Okay. He was good. He was definitely good. I was impressed. Yeah, I think definitely, of course, obviously, more happier with this result of your Tunisia and Denmark. Um, I mean, you, you still somewhat favor them to come through at the end of the day. Yeah. Um, but it's, yeah, it's it's not an ideal start. And uh, they should be doing better, I think. I think Tunisia missed a great opportunity here to, to beat Denmark and pick up all three in a game where I think they were a the far better team. You know, Denmark had a few chances. Do you remember that chance that bounced across the box and they didn't put it in? That, and I think that was that was comical. Yeah, yeah. No, it was. And um, I think for Tunisia also, where they messed up was they weren't as proactive in the second half as they were the first half. Mm, that is true. They fell away. I think yeah. it's a it's a um fatigue you know they start they 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 they, they, they fell off it same similar to senegal they were uh, they were very lucky not to lose the game in similar fashion yeah that's true because, because denmark did up the ante later late in the game you know but it's a nil nil we had two nil nils in what the second match day where we only had a one nil nil for the entire 2018 i think yeah you're which right was france versus denmark yeah. Denmark, Denmark just loves that nil-nil, man. <laughs> but look, before we land the plane, we have to talk about France. But before we do, let's just touch briefly on the games we got coming up tomorrow. We got Morocco, Croatia. You have you made predictions for those yet? Oh, like individual match predictions? Oh, yeah. let's go ahead. Um, so, <clears throat> Morocco, Croatia. I have that being a draw. Me but too. I, I have a I have a one one draw for this. I do too. I have a one one. Germany, Japan. I want to see a lot of goals in this game, man. Because like, if there's an Asian team that has true quality and I think can do what Saudi Arabia did today to another big team, it's Japan. I mm. I'm gonna say a lot of goals. Um, I'm gonna say this could be like a four three to Germany, mm. or or maybe like. A four, two, four, two, four, three to Germany. I have Germany winning though. Will you? Yeah, me too. Me too. I have Germany winning this one. Um, I haven't made a prediction for Belgium, Canada, but I'm leaning towards Belgium. 
What about you? I have to believe. I have to believe in Canada. I have to believe. I have to believe. <laughs> I, I'm going. I'm going with one nil for Canada. I know it's crazy. Yeah, I, I know you believe. didn't predict you. You didn't predict Belgium to do well. That's 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 a thing too, you know. <laughs> I know. And and the Spain Costa Rica Concacaf. Ah. Uh... Well, a very specific prediction for that is we could it could set a record for like most dominant possession in a single World Cup game. Let's just say I could wow. see Spain having like ninety percent of the ball. Man. They had like eighty something percent against Sweden last year. I think this game is gonna it's gonna be boring. I wanna say one nil. I think Costa Rica is gonna be really resilient, but they'll mm. finally get broken down in like the last ten minutes of the match. I think yeah. it's gonna be one. I think I have one nil for Spain. I have a two nil for Spain winning this one. Even though I have Spain getting knocked out in the group stage, I still have them winning. And Japan, who I picked to go through to lose. But look, last but not least, the elephant in the room. One of the elephants, France, are looking to avoid that champion's curse. I got to give it to them, man, because I thought it was going to be disaster. Because when Australia scored to Craig Goodwin, Matthew Lecky with that ball into the box, and I was like, oh boy, here we go again. Here we go. What were your initial reaction when that happened? I, I thought possibly Curse was was uh, back on the menu and uh, <laughs> you know, temporarily because we got all the bad news of the injuries in the last week or so for France. And it was just like, it felt like every development coming out of their camp was just like one inconvenience after the other. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that even though it was a great goal by Goodwin, like that ball should have never been allowed to, to have, have landed to him. Like, yeah. I, but, but I mean, I, I, thought maybe australia could do something here maybe they could hold on but i think that uh it was just too much in the end france just have too much quality at the end of the day you look at who australia has on their roster they they're yeah. not star -studded, studded not squad. a lot of quality at all not a lot of quality at the end of the but, day mm. that that's just the most important factor because at the you look at the stats not just the score sheet they france registered six times the number of shots uh on goal and then mm -hmm. australia that's ridiculous and the thing too right um you got to give it to australia they, they led they led for quite a, quite some time around 18 minutes or so they led for mm -hmm. and you got to give them a lot of credit there they took the lead they held on to it a little bit even the france were dominant it kept them out but that Rabio goal, that ball into the box. Tio Hernandez came on for his brother who got injured. Rabio header goal. And then the Giroud, the Giroud goal, I think was a um I can't remember all the goals, how they happened. That 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 first goal was what was that? That was a that was a tap in, I think, right? That was the yeah, that was the Rabio square. That was when um Matt Ryan, you know, put his team under pressure by passing the ball out from the back right there. And then the right back, who was already sweating, dealing with um, Kylian Mbappe, had to, you know, he had a heavy touch. And then Mbappe involved Rabio Square and um, Giroud tap in to get his 50th goal for France. You got to give Rabio a lot of credit for maturing as well, though. Yeah. You know? Remember the whole drama with his mother? Exactly. And in 2018, he refused to actually be in the reserves. Yep. Yep, and he was banned for the team from the team for a while. So give it up to him, though. And with uh, with France taking the lead, they came back in the second half and just continued where they left off. Man, Mbappe, man, wow, this guy's electric. This guy's elect. I I I'm gonna say this right now. I know Messi is great, Ronaldo is great, but Mbappe has to be the man. You know, he has to be like. He, I, I think he has to like have the that. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's hard to say, but I think Mbappe is like surpassing these guys because Messi and Ronaldo is at that age now where yeah. they can't do the things that they used to do when they were Mbappe's age. You see what I mean? I think, yeah, I think you are seeing a change of the guard. In, in exactly. Real um. 
yeah, he rose up for that header and off the post, and he had he had two Australian uh, left backs beat for that. I, I he he's the go to guy. Yep, he's he is that dude. That's why and, I couldn't predict them to get knocked out in the group, bro. I, I I'm like, you have Dembele in great form, you have Mbappe in great form, you have Chua many who could replace N'Golo Kante. Rabio stepped up in place of Pogba. Griezmann is ever present. Giroud. Giroud. I still has a role in the squad. Exactly. You know? And if it if if Benzema didn't get injured, Giroud would have been on the bench. Who knows? Maybe Benzema would have been missing chances all day and they would have lost. So everything happens for a reason. Everything does happen for a reason. And, and this is this just speaks to their depth. I I think we still have to see how they do it else it where in the group. Not mm. forget even the knockout saves, because because I don't think Tunisia is gonna get lambasted like this. I don't think Denmark certainly will will, will as well. Um, because I think I look at a side like Tunisia, I think they're a little bit more disciplined and organized. I look at Denmark, of course, Denmark has, has beaten them recently. So if they, uh, what if France run away with this group with nine points? <laughs> it's possible from it's what possible. I saw today from what I saw today, it's quite possible, man. The squad has a lot of depth and they, they have a lot of weapons they could bring off the bench still. And even with the numerous injuries, I, I think we have to start taking France very serious now. There's also a situation where they could lose the next two games. <laughs> you see yeah. what I'm saying? And we 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 were like, oh shoot, somebody someone sold me a fake chain here. Huh? Who who is it? It's France. You sold me a fake chain. No, it was Australia. <laughs> they just wanted <laughs> to fool everybody. <laughs> you know, but look, yeah. man, look. But I will say credit to Australia building off what you said earlier about them. They almost equalized. They almost came back because Jackson yeah, Irvine. Too, exactly. But and the I, thing is, Australia didn't deal with those balls in the box. The Giroud no, header, the Rabio header, and the Mbappe header. They, they just, with their height advantage as well, they, they just couldn't deal with the, the balls into the box. And they paid the price. Yeah. Yeah, they did. You know, it's going to take some massive performances in the, in the last two games for them to come out. It doesn't look good. But I have to say, I think there may have been a, a, a bad selection thing here by Graham Arnold. When when Mabil and Cole came on, those players looked good. Yeah, I thought that was weird. Why didn't Mabil start? Was there a Ma, reason? I, I don't know what it is, though. Mabil, the first time I saw him, I'm like, okay, who is this guy? You know, okay, he's a refugee, South Sudanese. You know, there's three of them on the team, right? Yeah. Which yep. is re- crazy. So shout out to Australia for that, helping out the refugees and everything, right? But you got to play these guys, man. Play them. I'm pretty sure they, they have more stamina and they're more talented than some of the guys that are starting. What are you trying to prove? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It has to be very disappointing for Aussie fans because it's like, this is four years on. You started off the World Cup against the same team and you you, you lose more emphatically than you did four years ago against exactly. a squad that is depleted. It must feel from like their standpoint that like there's been no real meaningful progress, you know? Yeah. I mean, France or France, of course. You're going to lose, then you're going to lose. But like if Australia goes on to have a really, really bad World Cup, it could feel like they'll look back on it and think they were lucky to make it here. Definitely, man. So, look, man, you have to land the plane. But are you looking forward to these games on Thursday? Switzerland, Cameroon, Uruguay, South Korea, Ghana, Portugal, Brazil, Serbia. The last of the first round of games. And then, of course, Friday, we have the second rounds. Friday, you know, I am looking forward to getting the first round out of the way because I want to sit back, bro. I don't want to talk because I've seen the teams play and I want to, you know, analyze the thing like that. You see, I don't want to speculate based on form coming into the World Cup and all these things. I want to talk about what I saw and how I feel teams would do going forward. You see what I mean? So yeah. I think the, the the second round of games, I think, like in terms of us analyzing and talking about these matches, it's going to be a little bit easy on us. You know what I mean? Yeah, because we'll have a clear picture of where these teams like are. Exactly. So, look, this is the episode three of World Cup Digest with your boy Dominic Rich and Football Fair. Football Fair, um, do the honors and you know do the do the do give me an outro, bro. As always, thanks for having me on. 
we're still just getting started so if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to dom's channel if you haven't already find me over at my channel as well you can also find me on twitter where i tweet my thoughts in real time while matches are going on find me football pharaoh at soccer pharaoh that's football pharaoh at underscore soccer underscore pharaoh and uh yeah, man. I mean, we still got a lot of action ahead, and hopefully, we see some some amazing uh, football tomorrow. A lot of goals, and uh, uh, maybe some upsets as well. So, hopefully, we'll see you guys soon. God willing. Until then, as always, have a good one. Much love and peace out. Peace, lovely.